right. So what to get to visual programming language, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go over here and click launch VPL. So this looks similar to what we've been using, but it has some differences. Okay? So just like before, on the left-hand side, we have events. On the right-hand side, we have actions. So on the right hand on the left-hand side, what we have is what sensors and then on the right hand side we have the actions that are going to happen. Okay, so these are touch sensors. That looks the same. This one over here or are for the proximity sensors. You will notice that white has two dots next to it. If there is something in front of my thymio, the two red lights come on. Okay, so if it's pressed and it's white, it means that there is something in front of Thymio because it's showing the lights. Does that make sense? But if I click again, it's black. What do you think that means? It means there's nothing. Everybody? Nothing. It means there's nothing in front. Okay? So it's the same thing over here. If it's white and it shows that white light, it means it sees something in front of it. If it's black, it means it does not see something in front of it. And if you click it one more time and it's gray, it's not checking that sensor. It means that's not even taking that sensor into account. Make sense? Okay. This over here is for the accelerometer. It gets sensed when it gets tapped. This over here is a block for the sound sensor. Thymio senses when it hears a noise. These are the different actions. This is a move block. It works the exact same way as it did before, where if you move these squares, you can control the speed of each one of the wheels. This block controls the light at the top, and you'll notice something happen. I was able to drag two actions. I see you guys already excited, okay? You can make one sensor trigger two actions at the same time. I see those smiles, okay? So if it hears a noise, you can make it turn color, and you could do something like make it drive, and you could do something like turn the bottom a certain color, okay? So this allows you, instead of having multiple lines, in order to have multiple actions from the same sensor effect, it allows you to put everything on one line. Now, what if I wanted it, the top to turn red and I wanted the top to turn blue? Can I do that? No. No, because you can't tell it to do two different things. It's the, either the robot's red or the robot's blue. But you can make the top color different than the bottom color. Yes, Alex? Um, if you were to move it twice, can you move it twice? Bounces away. Move the move thing? No. no. So you can't make it go back and then turn? Okay, so that's an interesting question. Okay, so what you're talking now is sequences. Do this and then do this, okay? If you're touching my cup, I need you to stop. Okay, so right now we are programming on event, which means everything is happening pretty much at once. So you can do that in something else I'm going to show you, and you can do what you're trying to do in code. But this is the simplest programming language, and because it's so simple, and what you're trying to do is more complicated, you're unable to do it in what in this right here. Yes? Is there any time in this one? I'll get to it. Okay? So, this version, they've made the simplest as possible. If this happens, do this. And now they've added, in this most recent version, if this happens, do this and this and this. Okay? 
if this happens, then you can do the same thing. Correct? Make a noise. Turn a color. Hit play. How are ones different though? Like the one has the thing at the top and then the other one has the thing. How is this different than this? No. This. No. The house that white dot is this. Okay, so this block is the top of Thymio. Yes, Danielle? And the bottom one is the one with the dot because uh, Thymio has like that mouth thing. So oh. if you look at Thymio from the bottom, you can see its wheels. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even notice that. You realized something that I did not realize. Yes, you see that dot that Thymio has. I didn't even notice that. I was looking at the wheels. From the bottom, you can see the wheels. From the top, you can't see the wheels. But that's a good call. Yes? Mom, why can't you do red and blue? You can do whatever you want, Greg. I just chose a color. OK? Any other questions right here? No. OK. So what I'm going to do is what I'm going to do is, if I push the forward button, I'm going to turn the top green, and I'm going to turn the bottom red. If I touch the middle button, I am going to turn off the colors at the top, and turn off the colors at the bottom, and I'm going to hit play. So now when I press the forward button, red and green, I'm going to press the middle button, it turns off. Cool. Okay? So I just programmed that robot. Now, if I press, notice what happens if I just select the middle button and I add something. The event in line three is the same as in line two. Notice how the sensor. I've selected is the exact same one. It does not like that. If I add something else, it's fine. You guys get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you wanted to delete a block out of here, if I hover my mouse on top of this block, you're going to see that X appear. If you click the X, it can get rid of that. You'll also see an X over here. If you click this X on the top right-hand corner, you will delete that line. So, this is the simplest visual programming language. There is also this button over here that I'm going to press, which is going to take me to the advanced visual programming language. Now, this is even more complicated than the simple version, but it's less complicated than code. Okay? So, this is good because it starts bridging the gap. And the difference between this program language and the last one that we saw, the main difference is this one allows you to do modes or states. I'm going to go over that in a second. First, I'm going to show you what more you can do with this one, okay? So, this is the same, okay? Using the sensors, the touch sensors are the same. Using the proximity sensors are the same. There we go. <laughs> All right, what? so actually, now we're in the advanced mode. Okay, you will notice it looks a little bit different. Because there are more blocks, I have to make my window a little bit smaller to see all the blocks, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to delete these lines of code as well. Now, this, you'll notice, is the same block. You can say, if I push a button, make my robot turn green. Now, the one below it looks a little bit different. The way this one works is if I go ahead and push one of the sensors, now I have this. And if I put it all the way down and I hit play, it says if there is something in front of my robot, my robot's going to turn green. Now, I had to get pretty close, probably less than half an inch to my robot before it turned green. Did you see that? I'm going to do it one more time. 
going to take my hand and pull it closer and closer and closer. There you go. I was about half an inch away. Now, what do you think this changes? Huh? Yeah. I think it changes like the distance that it needs to go. To exactly. So it changes the distance because what it does is it changes the sensitivity of that sensor. So now I boosted it all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And now I have my robot and I'm going to start my hand far away and I'm going to slowly move it forward. Okay, so that's about probably four inches away, right? So now with the advanced mode, I'm able to change the sensitivity of my proximity sensors. What about that other thing? The same thing happens if I go ahead and I push this button again. I can change the sensitivity of it not being in front of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make this all the way here. I'm going to hit play. Oh, wait. I'm going to put my hand in front of it and I'm going to slowly pull it away. Okay? So this is actually going to be useful if you're doing something like following lines. Okay? Because if I do something like this, I can actually change both sensitivities of it seeing something and it not seeing something. Now, this is pretty cool. This block uses the accelerometer. So if it's on the first setting, it just senses being tapped. So right now, if it's tapped, it turns green. Okay? Now what I can do is I can go and click this button in the middle over here. And now I have another option. Now I can take Thymio and I can tilt Thymio. And I can hit play. So now what happens is if I tilt Thymio at that angle, it turns green. Pretty cool, right? All right. So now if I go ahead and I hit the third option, now I can make Thymio react depending on what angle it's at. Oh, like if he's falling down? Like if he's falling down. He'll turn red. Or last class says, you could make it like he's on a roller coaster. So he can do certain things depending on how he is. There's also ways, okay, to program it so he can balance on top of a yoga ball. Okay? So there are really interesting things that you can do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And when I tilt Thymio back at the same angle that you can see in the picture, boom! It's green. Pretty cool, right? Raise your hand if you're excited about that. Um, question. Pretty cool. Yes. Um, what is the button? Yeah, that. What's the green? This? Yeah. I will go over that in a second. That is the modes and the states I was talking about before. Okay? So, the next thing is the clap is the same. Yeah. This it's over the here is the timer. The timer works the same way as it did last time, but the difference is you need to be in the advanced programming language to see the timer. So the way timer works is if I push a button, then I'm going to start a timer. And after, and you can set it up to four seconds. In this case, I'll put it to be around three seconds. So I'm going to say, I'm going to press a button, and after three seconds, the timer is going to go off. And when that timer goes off, my robot is going to turn red. And it's going to make a noise. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Now I have my robot here, and I'm going to press the forward button. Ready? One, two, three. Okay? Ooh, my steak is done. Okay? So. Now you guys know what the timer is. Now, the next question was, what is this? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, so far we've just programmed it, so anytime you press the forward button, the same thing is always going to happen. Now, let's say for instance, when I am in a good mood, and when I am in a good mood,
food, and Femi over here turns in his chair. I go, hey, Femi, can you please stop? But let's say I'm in a bad mood, and Femi turns in his chair, and I say, Femi, stop turning in your chair. Okay? So the same sense of response, the same, the same, the same stimulus can trigger a different response. Okay? Your robot can do the same thing. Where depending on what state it's in, the same stimuli can trigger a different response. Okay? So let me show you what I mean by this. Right now, I'm just going to call this state number one. Okay? This is going to be the first state. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this and delete the timer. So right now, it's going to say, when I press the forward button, I'm going to turn my robot green. And let's say when my robot is happy and it gets tapped, it makes a happy noise. Now let's say if my robot is mad and you tap my robot, it makes a sad noise and it turns red. Okay? So let's make that happen. What's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say when this button is pressed, it's going to turn green and it's going to make a happy noise. And that happy noise is going to be a nice high-pitched noise. Now the difference between black and white dots is the black ones are short and the white ones are long. Okay? So right now, I'm going to say when I press the, this forward button, it's going to turn green and make a noise. So let's do that. All right. But maybe when I press the middle button, he turns mad. He turns mad. He changes states. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say when I push the middle button, then he's going to change until my second state. Okay? And when he's in the second state and you press this button in the second state, then my robot is going to turn mad and is going to play a sad noise. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Now I'm going to press the forward button. Robot's happy. Robot's happy. Robot's happy. Now I'm going to do something my robot doesn't like. I'm going to push the middle button and I've changed the state. So now when I press the middle button, which the, the forward button, which normally makes him happy. He's not happy anymore, even though I'm doing the same thing. So what I'm going to do now, can I turn him back into the first? I'm pressing the middle button. No. No. So what I need to do is I need to have, I need to have a way to turn it back into the first state. So I could make it the middle button if I want, or I can say, I could say if I press the middle button, and I'm in state two, then go back to now. You might think that I want it to go back to this state, but what you actually have to do is if I turn them orange, orange is going to turn that light on. What I need to do is I need to turn that light off, and so I need to select the white to turn this off to get back to this state. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit play. So I'm going to go ahead and press the forward button. I've got a happy robot. I'm going to press the middle button. Now when I press the forward button, I have an unhappy robot. But now that I'm in state two and I press the middle button, what's going to happen again? Now I'm going to press the forward button. You guys understand? Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions? Are you guys excited? Yeah! yeah.